Hello, my name is Greg, and today we will have hands-on experience with the ZeoKit SDK. And to start our coding journey toward that graphic library, we should start with just downloading the code. And you can always grab the whole repo as a zip, but you can also uh, just get a git clone using the Visual Studio code. So you should open all commands and try to git clone, and then clone from GitHub. And for that purpose, you have to specify the name of the, your repo and then choose the location on your hard drive where you would like to have that repo downloaded. And just to be clear, that repo is quite big. It's something about five gigabytes of data. So it can take some time to get it on your machine. For me, the cloning process has been finished and now I have the repo on my uh, computer. So after opening that folder, you see the content of the repository. The most important at the very beginning is just to look into the package JSON. What do we have here? And as you can see, there are maybe not so many dependencies, but there are some. So your first uh, step is just to grab them, just to install them from the NPM. So NPM install and after some time, you will have them all ready to use. So that's it. And uh, what we you can do next? Then you can try to look into the samples. As we saw in the previous material, those samples are split across different categories. So let's try to recap what was previously. So if we go to the samples, then there are some building models. And here we can see it's different file formats. So let's go with this uh, XKT, KT, and here it is. Okay, so this is a sample now running from the GitHub. But if we will go to exactly the same category, buildings, and uh, here it was, which was that? Probably that one, but I have to check. Yes, it was that one. So here, we have the same code but of running from our uh, local machine but yeah now it is not running so let's go live uh, i'm using this live server and i have the same exactly effect as from the web browser as from the yeah, github repo and uh, now it is coming from my machine so just to see that i can change how it looks then please look that when i am rotating the model i don't see the edges so this uh fast navigation plugin, here it is, uh, it has this height edges property set to true. I will change it to false, uh, save, the hot reload was done. And now after rotating my model, you see that those edges are still visible. So what we now see on the screen is our local host uh, environment. So every your every uh, change in the in the in the code base will reflect on what do you see here okay uh, maybe just a comment about this live server uh, i have grabbed it as an extension just like that so here it is a live server there are different extensions for that purpose but i am usually using live server for such simple websites like this when we have the html css uh, embedded into the code and also the javascript is somewhere here exactly here it is enough truly it is enough and the live server doesn't you know depend on too 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 much stuff so let's try for example with those uh, camera settings now because at the very beginning if i will refresh that website we are looking into our building from that angle so after changing let's move it along x-axis i will try to yeah just to move it and now uh, after saving changes you will see that okay so now the center the eye of the camera is located in a different pla diff different place and those uh, live preview they makes that change quite smooth based on that approach you can check many samples so for example let's go with annotations and there is a sample for creating annotation at the center of clicked object so user is picking some wall uh, some object like that and then uh, as you can see based on the event picked uh, we are getting what was picked and we are getting the bounding box of that after that some utility uh, class math which was loaded some somewhere here exactly here it is uh, we will go there 
in a few seconds, we are calculating uh, the center of the bounding box, and based on that, we know where that annotation should be picked. Okay, looking at the code, it seems quite clear, but let's see uh, how it will work. So let's uh, once more go live with that sample, and I will click in one of the corners, but the annotation will appear somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. In the center, of course, not somewhere. Uh, my clicking is just uh, picked uh, in a strange uh, place. Okay, and here we see that there is some identifier and some uh, random uh, information, but I would like to change maybe that data, maybe that color. Let's see. So here, let's uh, try to see what is possible here. So the identifier, the entity, word position, values. Okay, here it is. And here is the marker. So it was green. I will change it to red, why not? And also here the title. Uh, yeah, let's try to add uh, something from us. So it will be uh, object. Okay, let's uh, do some minor changes just to show you that, okay, now we see that the title is different and also the color is different. So we were able to steer how the annotation plugin is working. And that's the, yeah, one of the first uh, things which you can do to just get the idea, okay, so what is possible, how to change it. And as I said previously, that annotation plugin or any plugin uh, is, the documentation for that is available online. So here you can see what exactly is possible with those annotations, what are the different use cases, and how you can tweak it uh, toward your usage. And all of those plugins, they are quite extensible. But okay, let's try to figure out what you should do when you will see that, oh, that annotation plugin is not enough for me, that I want to do something special. And for other web viewers, that would, the, that, uh, would be the point when you would just give your hands and say, sorry, it can be done. But here, based on the fact that the Zio kit is open source, you can always go into the code of that annotation and try to rebuild how it works. Of course, it won't be so easy because you need to understand how it is built, what you have to change, all of that. But there is a possibility to do that. And yeah, that's quite good. So let's try to go not to the samples uh, area of that code base, but to the source. And here you can see that the source is split across extras, plugins and viewers. Probably we want to go into the plugins and there is the annotations plugin. And here there is the JavaScript, which is used to create your annotation. And maybe not annotation.js because this is about the entity, but about annotation plugin. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of different documentation showing how to use that plugin, but also at the bottom, there is the source code. So here, and there is the annotations plugin, and that code is required, yeah, it is responsible for making those annotations. So here's some error handling, some annota annotation object and uh, handling the life cycle of that annotation. All of that is here. So if you will face the situation when you will see that, oh, the plugin for annotation for the dimension for something is not enough for your purpose, then you have to figure out, okay, so what has to be changed? But after making those changes, the question is, okay, but how to utilize that? How to use it in those samples? So let's look from which source, from which file those plugins are loaded into the samples. And here you can see that they are coming from the from that repository, from the local directory in the distribution. So here there is the distribution and that sample is loading the minified uh, JavaScript module. So that file and how to create that file, how to manipulate over that. Let's look into that in the file explorer just to see, okay, what is inside of that? I will try to move it. Here it is. Okay. So here are different uh, versions of those uh, files. Yeah. Those samples, they are reading the minified ones. So those one. And if you would go back into the package JSON, then you will see that, that we have different uh, uh, scripts. We have the script for the build and the dev build. 
So let's try to run the dev build, npm run dev build, and it should create um, the bundle coming from that configuration. Okay, so let's uh, try to do that. We will uh, yeah, just go through all of those plugins, all of that stuff, and as you can see uh, what was changed, that was changed. So SDK ES JavaScript. So that file is not minified. It has all over five megabytes uh, of data. And of course, if you want to go with the minified version, then you should probably use the rollup coming from here, and that will result in a minified version. And but of course, the process of minification will take some time. So for the just playing around, uh, trying different stuff, it would be better just to use the dev build and then uh, change in your sample ZeoKit SDK ES. So I will not use the minified version, but that new one coming from what I was already uh, building. And of course, the sample will still work. Uh, nothing major changed. And yeah, just to show you what you should do when you want to change something internally, something in the SDK and see the result on your machine. Because yeah, there are two different areas of this repo. There is the sample, uh, the example uh, directory with all of those nice samples, but also there is the internal, there is the engine. And if you want to see your changes in the engine, then after making uh, your tweaks in the JavaScript, you need to build, you need to compile that into a new bundle. And after uh, using that, you will see your uh, changes. At some point, you will feel the need to check your new viewer or your new features with your own model, not those sample ones delivered with the ZeoKit SDK. And as you can find out in the assets models, let's go there, assets, here it is, models, and then depending on the file, but okay, XKT, and we have version 10, GLTF embedded, and here is the file. And those XKT files, they are binary files, and they are not readable by the human. You need the library to read the content of that, but it won't be very natural for you. But it provides super fast streaming of your data to the web browser, and also there is not much interpretation of the data in comparison to the IFC. So the time needed to view your model in the web browser is so quick. And that's the main reason why the ZeoKit is shining in terms of the speed, because it doesn't need the time to pre-process geometry coming from the IFC. It doesn't you know, glue all of those pieces together. It doesn't create extrusions, revolutions, and all of that geometry stuff. It has the geometry already there. But the question is, OK, but hey, I have the IFC, and that web viewer, it needs some other file format how I can convert my IFC to the XKT. And for that reason, uh, you can check the documentation, the official one, which is quite, uh, there are different paths. So on that website, you can see the most recommended one, which should work with a big IFC files, and it uses uh, some closed source solution from the Creox. So you have to contact with them about uh, the details. And yeah. It works with the huge IFC because it is written in the C++. So there is no overhead coming from the managed memory. And that is the most recommended way of converting your IFC to the XKT. But there are also some other solutions like this one. Uh, it comes with some extra steps because as you can see at the top, we have the IFC. Then we are getting the GLB and also the JSON with the metadata and then with one convert to XKT, we are getting the final model. And also there is uh, the third path that you don't create those intermediate files. It's just this transformation is done in a single shot. But uh, as you can see, uh, it should not be used with a large IFC because internally it is uses the web IFC. So it is getting the web assembly under the hood. And based on that, uh, it is uh, converting your IFC to the XKT. And you can check this convert to XKT because it is used here and also here. 
and also here so it is used in an, any type of this conversion and that is just a javascript node application as far as i know and there is quite a lot exactly so uh, there is the documentation with all of the command line uh, arguments so you can try on your own uh, how it can be done and uh, it can be tweaked with other stuff it all depends on your needs but i want to show you one additional thing which is involved which is related to the zeo kit so that zeo vision and the zeo vision is a thing which you you think at the first when you are hearing about the web viewer for, for the IFC. It hides all of the complexity needed to parse the IFC file to make it very fast, very quick under the hood. So here, if you just drop some IFC, uh, it will be queued for the conversion in the background in some uh, server and just a hyperlink for uh, checking uh, your file with some other uh, people will be generated so now i'm just trying uh, with the sample ifc which is provided here and uh, if you provide here your own ifc then after a while needed for the conversion you will get uh, your model uh, in a, that form that you can just get the hyperlink and share with the other other uh, project members and they will just get it in a you know just a few seconds so that's the power of the zero vision but yeah you just need to remember that under the hood uh, it goes with the converting with the reading the ifc content and parsing it to a very fast xkt binary file which yeah if you want to do without the zero vision you need one of the converters here so uh, i strongly rec recommend to visit that particular website where it shows how it can be done and if you will ever feel the need to have your own model to check with your features then now you know how where to start okay that's all what i wanted to show you in a very quick pace about the zero kit sdk of course after that you can just jump into a lot of different features a lot of different development but i wanted to show you the first steps how to start with the zero kit sdk and what does it mean to convert from the ifc to xkt so that's all for this uh, short series let's see what the future will bring Thank you very much and see you next time.